Welcome back to the video blog. Adam Daniel Mize is my name. Toronto, Canada. Rainy Toronto, Canada. Second day in a row, and there's some little snow particles, as you can see, flying around. But still, it is not cold enough for me yet. It is not cold enough for me yet. So I've been going through this little book over here. This is Paul Batista's Independent Film Producing, The Outsider's Guide to Producing a First Low-Budget Feature Film. Nice little book, basically that focuses in on the law, legal procedures that go into making your independent film to make sure that you don't get into hot water. These are the kinds of things that independent filmmakers need to pay attention before they even put their fingers onto the keyboard to pen their script, or before they even buy their script. These are the arrangements that exist between the various above-the-line principles, director-writer, writer-director, producer. Sometimes these roles are together in combination, but these particular roles need to be clearly delineated in advance to make sure that by the time the film is actually on set, that the film is distributable. The key is to making sure that all the various legal elements of your film are such that the film is distributable, that you can actually get it distributed either yourself or through a content aggregator or through a mainline distribution company because they basically won't take the film if these various documents that a good lawyer a good lawyer that costs 5% of your production budget. That means if you have a $50,000 film, you should be spending at least 2500 on your lawyer. These various documents need to be filed in advance if you expect to have this film seen by audiences in a public setting, either in a DVD or in a theatrical venue. Here are some of the things that a lawyer that you pay on a flat fee basis, again, 5% of your budget, these are some of the things that the lawyer is going to work out for you your copyright registration, in other words, for the screenplay. Whose property is that screenplay? Just because a writer submitted to a production company a screenplay doesn't mean that that writer is the copyright owner of that particular work, you see. You have to make sure that the title is intact. Any title rights issues or doubts, scarce production companies, write the hell away. B. Formation of entities whether a corporation, an S-corporation, a limited liability corporation, or some other entity. Yeah, the, it's got to be a company. The film is a company. It's an LLC. Ideally, it's a limited liability corporation. you got to have a company for the film. you got to have a place where the revenues can come in, where it can get taxed, where you can pay salaries, where you can pay overheads, and where the books can be properly audited and checked. You have to have a legal entity for your film. You can't just shoot a film. I mean, you can. But if you expect it to get distributed, distributors are going to throw a whack of forms and papers at you, and these are some of the things that you're going to have to show and demonstrate bona fides for. C. Compliance with state and federal securities laws. Of course, it depends if you're in different countries. It's not necessarily state and federal. Of course, up here in Canada, we have a different situation, but it's basically the same. You have to comply with the different jurisdictions. Jurisdictions that have their fingers into your film that can actually affect the screening of your film, the making of your film, or any other components of your film, you have to make sure that those various bodies are satisfied. Things like drafting a private placement memorandum, things like that. You can't just do things like that. That was somebody that come, just came to say hi and distracted me over here. Hi. Yes. And just to let you know that if these things aren't properly in place, then you basically are not going to be able to make your film properly. Now, D, full service contracts, including the writer collaborations, literary options and sales. Now they're taking photos of me. Three, above the line agreements for the writer, the director, the producer, and the actor, or below the line agreements, all other crew members, all of these various contracts need to be in place if you expect to have your film distributed, like I said, by a mainline distribution body, or by yourself, self-distributed. E, location releases and permits. You can't just shoot anywhere. Yes, there are some indie filmmakers that like to go guerrilla, people like Gary King at Kitchen Table Films. Go big or go home. No permit, no problem. You know, shoot it now, ask for forgiveness later. This kind of thing. Don't ask for permission because you're never going to get it. Make sure that your various locations are taken care of in advance. Number number F. See, here's I'm distracted. That would be number six. Music rights. There are two elements to this. Synchronization and master use licenses and other clearance contracts. You can't just use music in your film, as you know. Even if it's temp soundtrack, you've got to get rights clearance on at least two different fronts. The sync license and the master use license. And they both have costs attached to them. And they can sometimes break your bank, which is why a lot of indie filmmakers like to use free music stuff to get out of iota promo net or other different sites or 
even bands that pony up free music because they're looking to get exposure for their band. Things like that, your lawyer can take care of for you. And of course, this being the seventh point, union and guild contracts. Screen Actors Guild, otherwise known as SAG. The Writers Guild of America, otherwise known as the WGA. The Directors Guild of America, otherwise known as the DGA or the PGA. The Producers Guild, you got to make sure that all these different things are taken care of. For example, distributors need to know that the residuals to these various unions are being paid out of revenues that your film is making, necessarily. If it doesn't actually have those residuals taken out of their general revenues, you can't possibly expect to have your film distributed by a mainline distributor. That seems to be the problem with most independent filmmakers and that they basically can't get their ducks in a row legally. And some of these things are taken care of in Paul Batista's independent film producing. Of course, Paul Batista is the legal eagle over at filmcourage.com where you can read about some of the things that are going on in the legal field, in the independent film industry, and other information at that famous community site run by David Brennan and Karen Warden. Of course, I do film reviews over there, and my name is Adam Daniel Mazze, where you can find me at www.pmdforhire.com. Your producer of marketing and distribution, pmdforhire.com is the name. Thanks again for watching, and yes, a gust of cold wind has just blown right over me and my coffee and my materials, and it's not cold enough for me yet, ladies and gentlemen. It's not cold enough for me. And as you can see, I have actually gone without a scarf today here in Toronto, otherwise known as Toronto. Aren't the chimes nice?